welcome to West Valley. We are thrilled to be together. Some of us are actually in the same room together right now. So look around and, and uh, just enjoy being together. If you are online, we're so thrilled that we are uh, a community that gets to join together even online. And so um, thank you for being here. If you're a guest and you are just jo now joining us, we're so uh, thankful that you have decided to be with us today and please let us know that you're there. We would love to communicate with you, help you and respond to any questions you might have. So welcome. At West Valley, we do several things throughout the week to stay connected. You have already heard me say them, but I encourage you to join in with them. 7.15 Tuesdays, we're doing a Zoom prayer. We gather together, we pray for each other, we pray for our world. This is powerful, please join us for that. Just carve out that time and make it a priority in the new year. 7.15 on Thursdays is a little bit lighter, Instagram Live where we get to hear some stories, we get to laugh with some corn memes with Richard and we are interviewing different people in our church family just to hear what they're doing, what's going on. Maybe you haven't seen their face for a, several months. So please join us for that. Just, just it's easy. Please uh, just get on Instagram and, and click the button at 7.15 on Thursdays for westvalley.church and you're in. And then I also wanna let you know that on uh, as of January 1, we started a Bible reading plan. It's not too late to start because we've just started and we're using the YouVersion Bible app you, there is a link, uh, there's a, a link to it in our description, as well as you will get an email reminder that says, hey, please join us. And we're using the Bible Project Biblical Storyline Reading Plan. I'm really enjoying it because it has, um, for the devotionals every day, or maybe most days is a video that kind of gives a cool overview of the whole story of the Bible, the specific area that we're in right now is in Genesis. It's really uh, informative, but also powerful because we're doing this together. So please join us for that. Get on board with it because it's just kind of an easy way to um, be able to reading, be reading together and reading God's Word. So I am excited that we have started this. It's not too late to join us. I wanna thank you for continuing your faithful giving. This is a generous church with a generous community and we are so grateful that we have the privilege of giving back to God and allowing him to use our resources to meet, the, uh, meet each other's needs and uh, be able to continue to gather in whatever way that we are able. And like today, some of us are here in, in the room and others are sharing from a distance and so we're grateful that as you give faithfully God is honored by that. I wanted to uh, leave you with a verse in Hebrews 10 starting with 23 it says this it says let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess for he who promised is faithful and let us consider how we may spur one another on towards loving good deeds not giving up meeting together as the habit as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as we see the day approaching. I really feel like this verse is as timeless as it was when it was written as it is today, that we have the opportunity to not give up meeting together, not give up uh, for uh, just continuing our, um, our considering each other and encouraging each other in our faith and so I'm thankful that you are here, whether it's in, uh, you know, in person or online, and that we are continuing to encourage each other through our worship together and through our commitment to God's church. We get to worship now, we get to listen to God's word, and I wanna leave you with the message that is so strong and so powerful is that you are loved.
and kingdoms will bow down. And every chain will break, as broken hearts declare he gives praise. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. Every knee will bow before you. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sin of the world. His blood breaks the chains. And every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Oh, every knee will bow before the Lion and God who calls to save, He's here to set the captives free. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power, fighting our battles. Every knee will bow.
Good morning. It's great that we are back together again in person right now that we're here. And those of you who are, uh, are here in the building, uh, we're thrilled about that. Every time we get to do this, it's fantastic. Our first time 2021, we're back in the building and uh, we're looking forward to this becoming uh, routine again in a certain, in the positive sense, the back to the abnormal as we start to gather again. And uh, so we're excited about that. If you're watching us uh, on video today, glad that you are with us. Uh, 
where lo you're loved as much at home as you are in, in presence, but it's your presence that often makes a difference in other people's lives. So that's why we look forward to gathering in person. Um, I want to just open us with a word of prayer and uh, recognition. Again, uh, we may have flipped the calendar, but things haven't changed too much in our uh, country, have they? Another rough week and a lot of stuff going on. And things are changing rapidly in our country. Some things that I think we should be very concerned about. And not always the things that gets the immediate attention in the flash in the front. It's the changes that come and slide in behind those that really, I think, can affect uh, how we can express our faith. And uh, so I want to just start us with prayer that we're aware of that. And then we're going to dive into God's Word together. So I'm thankful that we can go before Him. Father, we come before you. Um, Again, I think if we're honest, there's been things that have been concerning us this week. Uh, nothing seems to settle down. Strife continues to seem to remain. Um, poor decisions are made. It's just, we live in a, in a difficult time. And uh, Lord, I just thank you that you are still in control. You still know what's going on. Your will is still being accomplished. Your call is for us to respond, to come to you, to trust you, live with you, know you, and allow you to be seen in us. And so that's what we're asking. May that continue to be produced in us. May that be where you're drawing us and what is being seen uh, in us because you are uh, at work through us. And we're thankful for that. Lord, we pray for our country. It is in desperate need of your salvation, desperate need of revival, desperate need of the truth, desperate need of Jesus in the midst of all that's going on. And so we would just ask that even this morning, as we consider what you have to say to us, that we would be considering how what we learn and know of you will become, uh, you will be used, uh, use it in us to produce peace in our world. That completeness, that wholeness that you give. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. I am uh, going to start our time this morning by reading something to you. There's a... Uh, gentleman who has a blog. He's known as Ozzy Dave. I think I've mentioned him before. And uh, Renee follows him. I, I don't directly follow him. She follows him. And then I read a lot of times. She she gleans the good ones for me. And, and uh, he had one this week that I thought was um, insightful and challenging. He does a lot of things uh, working with um, Hebrew words and helping us to understand the insights with Hebrew words. And so I'd encourage you to look him up, Ozzy Dave. It's a good one to follow. And uh, this week he, he said this, uh, For centuries, Jewish believers have used the New Year as a time to make a different type of resolution. We, we talk about New Year's resolution. He's saying that, uh, and this was talking about a, a new type and from a Jewish perspective, and, and they call it the Cheshbon HaNefesh, and an, and a, or an accounting of the soul. This is when a person makes an honest assessment of their behavior and, and relationships in an effort to start the New Year without any baggage. Unlike our uh, resolutions, Jewish believers would resolve to improve their relationships with family, friends, the community, and with God. While we focus on our own health, wealth, and happiness, people in the times of Jesus would resolve to have better, stronger relationships with the people around them and with God. Uh, this is what Cheshvan uh, uh, HaNefesh means, to examine your soul and assess your behavior towards God and others, then set out to repair any broken relationships before the new year begins. So what I want to do today is to start with you and challenge you to uh, put yourself on a journey of a Cheshvan HaNefesh, okay? Uh, the idea of the accounting of your soul. And it's 2021. We've gone through a, a rugged year in 2020. There's nothing to say that this year's necessarily going to be better. I'm praying it will, but I'm praying more than it will be better. I'm praying that you will know God more deeply. And as part of that, I believe each one of us needs to take the time to have an accounting of our soul. And there's no better time when we flip the calendar and we're looking forward to what's going to come and the year lies out before us. I am encouraged if we can be those who take the time to account for our souls. And I, I don't say that lightly, and it's not a philosophical idea. It is a reality for one who knows of the existence of God and desires to know him and live with him. We need to check what's going on with our souls. And as he says there, that the, the idea of the ex examining your soul was to set, assess your behavior before God, towards God, and toward others. 
and then to set out to repair any broken relationships the new year begins. In this, my challenge for you in, your, in the uh, Cheshbon HaNefesh that we are going to um, uh, uh, embark on today, and I'm encouraging you, I'm going to end with that and challenging you, examine your souls. But I'm going to try to start with one specific thing. See, it, it can be very easy for us to think, oh, i got to examine my soul, and we kind of look at a little of this. How am I getting along with other people? Oh, I'm okay. Things aren't bad. How am I getting along with God? Oh, I think he's happy with me. And we move on by having a lighthearted approach to it and not taking it too seriously. I'm asking you to take it seriously, not from a heavy perspective of, oh, I feel guilty because I didn't, I wasn't nice to my neighbor. I feel guilty because I didn't uh, go to church enough. I feel, no, no guilt involved here. This is a health thing. It's deciding that I want to evaluate the health of my soul in relationship to how I, this living soul and being, have related to other people and how I want to relate to them in the coming year, and more importantly, how I relate to God. Am I relating to Him as He calls for me to relate to Him? So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to narrow it down for us today to give you a starting point, and for me, a starting point for this year, because we're going to launch a new series next week that's going to... uh, challenge us to be looking at how are we uh, living in relationship to God. And um, as part of that, I want us to start today, we're going to narrow it down to one, what I believe is the cornerstone of our relationship with God. And to examine there, because if we will look at that and be honest evaluation in regard to our soul and how we're relating to God in this one area, it will invade all other areas of our relationship with God and other people. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take us to what I believe is, as I said, the cornerstone, the building block that we need if we're going to examine our souls. If we start there, it will give us the uh, filter to, to examine all our other areas of our lives. Okay? Um, We have just come off of a series, and during this Christmas season, it was focused on the truth that God is with us, that he is present with us, that he, uh, Emmanuel, God came to be with us to offer us what? To offer us peace, wholeness, as as the Jewish writers, the Hebrew writers understood that God brought wholeness because we were incomplete. We were broken. We were missing that relationship with him. And salvation was intended to bring us back into wholeness with God. And so as we find ourselves in 2021, really kind of in this cauldron of boiling emotions all around us and things going all over the place, it seems that it would be wise for us to build off the idea that God is with us. We like that idea. And as I said during that uh, last series, that God being with us is not a seasonal event. It is, a, it is a, an eternal, this uh, moment I come to him, onward. He has taken care of my past. He secured my future. He resides with me in the present. I can know him. I can live with him. And so since God is with us, then we need to begin to examine and look at this idea of how, do, how am I doing in regard to my soul relationship with God. Is my, am I doing the things that is allowing for my soul to find its life, its completeness, its peace with God on a daily basis? Sometimes I think as believers and as Christians, we think of peace being made as I, any offense that I made toward God, God's now appeased in Christ, and that is true. His righteous demands were met, but God's peace isn't the, that of the demand being met. That was his righteousness. His peace is bringing back and giving to us the completeness we were created to experience. And so on this, uh, this idea of the uh, Cheshvan Han Nefesh, the, the examining of the soul, I want us to um, look at what God says uh, is most important and foundational and what is the, the central critical element that allows us to live at peace with God and in peace with God. So I want to start in the book of Isaiah, and this ties into what we looked at in the Christmas season, but I want you to hear the words of Isaiah, chapter 56, verse 7. The quick contextual setting of that is God, through his prophet Isaiah, is talking to his people about um, the blessings that come. He's calling them back to himself, and what the blessings of that return to him will be, okay? So keep that in mind as he's saying this. And then he gets into chapter 56, and he is talking about 
the salvation that he is going to bring. And in that talk of salvation is when God is going to restore, obviously, the relationship and bring his people back. But he, there's an element to the salvation is not a momentary thing for just the people of Israel at that time. They'll understand that God has saved them out of their circumstances, but God is bringing salvation for the soul in relationship to him. And I want you to listen to these words, starting with verse 7. The, uh, these, he's speaking about those who will receive salvation. These I will bring to my holy mountain and give them joy in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house will be called a house of prayer for all nations. There's some very significant statements about salvation being made there. Uh, that are critical for our understanding and our relationship with God. And I want to go, da- go back and break this down just a little bit so you understand what it is that God's saying through Isaiah. First thing he says is for those who are going to experience his salvation, that he will bring them to his holy mountain. In other words, he will move them, when it's with God, he will move them from afar to his dwelling place. He's bringing them into the area of his protection. They're bringing in into where his presence influences their existence. That's the beginning of salvation. You're drawing near to God. And in that process that it's not just, I move to a far corner of God's kingdom and, and taxes are less. It's not that kind of mentality. It's that God is bringing us back to where we were intended to be, where we're finding wholeness because we're drawing close to God. But he doesn't leave it there, does he? He says, and I will give them joy in my house of prayer. So it is a picture of I bring them, I bring them salvation out of their circumstances into close proximity with me all the way into the place where they dwell in my house. That expression, we can look at it and go, isn't that great? We... God's saying we can dwell with him. It's a literal expression, and I encourage you sometime, do a study on that uh, expression throughout Scripture. It is the idea, and it carries with it this, this picture that when God brings salvation, he doesn't just bring you from one circumstance into a little safer place and all, you know, the old feudal system, I'll, I'll offer you protection if you live within my boundaries. And I'm going to tax you fairly heavily, but, but it's a good system. His salvation is this. He's bringing you out of the circumstances of being separated from him into the area where he influences by his very presence. But he sees you as so valuable. He's going to bring you into his house. You become part of his family. That's what that literal phrase means when we're brought into the house of God. We are brought in as family to know everything about him. In a very small way, think about it. If you were to invite somebody to live with you, they move into your house, they're going to learn more about you than others would know. That's the idea and the reason God brings us in. But God, throughout Scripture, develops this idea that in being invited into his home, we will be totally influenced in becoming part of the family of God. Um, 1 John uh, 5, uh, was it 3, I think, in verse 1 Oh, what love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called the children of God, and that is what we are. And if you go on through that passage and all the way through the book of 1 John, and I'm just using that book as an example, there's this idea that we have been made the children of God, that the salvation found in Jesus has brought us not just into proximity with God, that God is near, but in nearness has brought me into his family. God is so near that I know everything about him, and I'm influenced in all that I do. I am living with the king who brought me salvation. It influences who I am. Now, an interesting thing, Jesus in his ministry often talked about his father's house. He talked about that he had come and that salvation was at hand, and he talked about that he was the fulfillment of the salvation that God was speaking of through Isaiah hundreds of years ago, this passage that we're looking at, and that Jesus was fulfilling Uh, and was the embodiment of that salvation. So he was the one, through Jesus, we would be brought into the area of God's kingdom. That's why Jesus always talked about the kingdom of heaven as a hand. But not only that, we would be brought into God's house. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. And then he goes on to say, but it's, it's true, and I'm inviting you into my Father's house. 
We have been made through salvation. Jesus is the embodiment of the salvation that God proclaimed. And he's calling us to come live with him. And so when Jesus uh, had an experience, and, and Jesus was the fulfillment of that salvation, we talked about that during our last series, that God, remember we talk about the big picture of God, and sometimes we lose what God is doing because we're so focused on the, on the one momentary experience of the birth of, the, of Jesus. But in reality, God was uh, sending his son, and who was born in human form, fully human, fully God, born that we would know what? That we would know salvation. So we could be brought back into what? Peace on earth, goodwill toward all. Because that peace brings wholeness again. And that wholeness is found in the presence of God. Not just in the outskirts of his kingdom where I know that God is real. But living salvation is the key that gets me in the door. That I can go to my room and my fa- that my father has prepared for me. And I live with him and I dine with him. Uh, Revelation 3.20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone will open the door, I will come in with them, and I will uh, dine with them. I will live with them. You see, that's the picture. God wants us in his house. God wants us not to live close by as a neighbor. We are his family. God, salvation, rechanges who I am. We've been adopted into the family of God. That picture runs all throughout Scripture. Okay, Jesus is the embodiment of that salvation that brings us into the family of God. And there was an experience that happened. We read about it in the Gospels and in multiple spots in the Gospels. But Jesus shows up at the temple one day. And in the temple, um, and you have to understand the sacrificial system that was going on, there were those that were the uh, religious leaders of the day saw a way to profit off of God. And they would sell in the temple... Uh, the, the animals necessary for the sacrifices, and they turned it into a marketplace in the temple um, courts. And Jesus comes in there, and he's very upset about this. And in one occurrence, he, uh, near, just before he is crucified, he overturns the tables and does this. But he, this happened, we believe, on multiple occasions with Jesus. He came in and talked about This is my father's house because in their day, the temple was the house of God, the evident place of God's dwelling with his people. Through Jesus and the salvation we have through his resurrection, we became the house of God. God dwells with us and we in his house. It is where he dwells. And so Jesus is there. And in Luke 19, for example, he's very upset about what's happened. And he says, my house will be a house of prayer. But you have made it a den of robbers. It's very interesting. He's referring back to that quote from Isaiah. And he speaks of what his father said. But he even uh, refers it to himself. That in, in God's house, it's a house of prayer. God's house is a house of prayer. But what had happened? What had happened in this situation was, and what so upset him was, that the people... Uh, In that day, the ones that should have known how to bring people close to the salvation of God that was available uh, to the God who was promising salvation so that they could stay in relationship with him. So when that salvation appeared, they would recognize it and turn to him. They didn't do it. They missed it because they had turned God's house into a house of personal gain. And I want you to see, that's really what Jesus is saying. They turned the dwelling place of God into one of personal gain over one of personal dependence. The temple was to be the place where I come to recognize my dependence on God. And instead, what was taking place, transactions that were being for the benefit, personal gain, and God was gone. And here's what's important to understand. I'm going to, I'll refer to this in a minute, but Jesus is saying there's two houses. There's the house of God where prayer will define it. And there's the house of personal gain where all is there is for those who want to make God for their benefit. And so... It raises the question, and I'm going to ask you to view this morning as we are looking at this um, idea of the, of the examining of my soul. And it's critical. It's the foundational point. I want to ask you this question, and then I'm going to clarify it. My question is, whose house are you living in? Whose house are you living in? Because God has said and repeats it over that his house is a house of prayer. And why is that significant? Here's why it's significant. Because in the other house where God is said in name and where God's, God may be um, 
we talk about him all the time. He's not present. He's not sought. His will is not what's important. We don't need him to influence our intent because what we want is to use God for our gain. And so when we face a problem, we seek God. When everything else is going on, God's not there. And, and we, what we need to understand, and you know, one of the points that Jesus was really driving home here is when you make your relationship with God one for personal gain, God leaves the house. And actually, you leave his house. And it's one that makes logical sense. I'm not going to develop it for you. But if my focus is on what's going to be best for me and what I'm, how I can gain, you don't need God. Unless it's to get past a hurdle that's keeping you from getting what you want. But if you're living in God's house, your reason for being there is the fact that you know that you were saved. You were brought back to a relationship with the God who created your soul. You are being made whole and complete again. And you want to live with the one whose will sets you free. And so you want to know his will in every circumstance and situation in which you find yourself. You find that you want to along with him. And therefore, as a result, you talk with God. You pray. And that's why the house of God, the house of salvation, is a house full of prayer. And so I'll ask you again, according to Jesus, the defining point of whose house you're living in is whether or not you pray. Prayer is the expression of living in the house of God. And I think Jesus knew what he was talking about when he talked and said that, that prayer, that God's house would be defined by prayer. I think he knew what he was talking about. And so as we look at this idea of examining our souls, the foundational cornerstone I want to challenge you to uh, really think about, and I've been thinking and praying about this and really trying to understand is that if I'm living with God, prayer is what defines my existence with him. It's not a fallback. It's not when I'm feeling down. It's not when those times happen, but the constant communication with knowing the one who has made me whole is what I have been given in salvation. And prayer is the expression. Prayer, constantly. Jesus talked about it. Praying. Jesus demonstrated in God's house, we pray. The defining element of the house of God is prayer. Those who live with God depend on God and pray. It's easy to think that we dwell with God for personal gain. But can you see how in the end to commune with God it will fade away when all that I'm interested in is my own personal gain. But in God's house, a person is dependent on God, which began with salvation and is necessary for life. Having been brought into his house, we want to know him, seek him out in every moment of life, humble ourselves before him, be encouraged and transformed by his will. We live with God, we find life in God, and therefore we talk to God. In my house, my house will be a house of prayer. You see, when prayer becomes a requirement or an option, you and I better check our address. We better check where we're living. Because somewhere along the way, we've moved out of God's house into our own dwelling. And we've asked God to come every so often when we need him. You see, prayer is a humble surrender of my will, my desires, my gain, to the will of God. It was his will that brought me my salvation. It's only his will that will give me life. Prayer isn't uh, prescripted words to please God. It is the surrender of my control to his control that I might know him and love him. I was talking to, uh, this has come up in a couple of conversations I've been in recently, but I've been in, in church ministry as a pastor for 30 plus years now. And somebody asked me recently, what was the, the uh, biggest, maybe unexpected, that has come out of ministry that I didn't expect? And you know what it, it was for me? I had to think on it a long time, but it came down to this. It's that those who say they know God don't pray. I think that's been my biggest surprise, I guess I would say. But in a lot of ways, the, it's an oddity to me. I don't feel I pray enough, so I'm not trying to put myself in that category. But if we say we live with God, he said, my house will be a house of prayer. And why is it that those who have found wholeness in God, had their sins forgiven, been brought from captivity to freedom, 
Don't find the need to talk to the one who set them free. Think how different this year could, will be and can be if we decide in the searching of our souls that we'll start with our relationship with God and say, God, forgive me. I've been making it for my gain and I haven't even spent time talking to you. You don't require a certain place, a certain time, a certain word, or certain wor uh, ways, or certain words. You want my soul and my heart surrendered in communication so that I can gain understanding in how to live. How do I live this freedom that I've been given? God calls us to pray. Not every once in a while when we feel like it or when we're afraid that we, we may have forgotten to, to thank God for the food. It's, it's a surrender to a joyful, this is salvation. And in his house, I pray. I, that has been, I said, it's one of the biggest surprises of how little followers of Jesus are really interested in praying. So here's my challenge to you. In your cheshvan uh, ha nefesh, your searching of the soul, take time to do that this week. And I'm asking you to narrow it down to one thing. You can look at the effects of other relationships that you have, and you may need to go and find healing in those relationships and seek forgiveness. You may need to do a number of things. But I want you to start with your relationship with God. And I believe, honestly believe, that maybe it's time for us those of us right here that call West Valley our home, that we do an examination and ask ourselves, do we pray? God, forgive me. I don't seek you to know you and to discover the depths of salvation. I just seek you to help me out so that life isn't too hard. Salvation already took care of that, God says. Seek me to know me, because in his house, it will be a house of prayer. Think about that with me in the coming weeks as we dive into a new year. We have the opportunity to come back to the house of God. If you're not living in the house of God, guess what? He'll help you move back in. He's made it available to you. The room's been prepared. He's been hoping that you would be there, that you was, would recognize who you are in Christ, and that you would ask him and talk to him on the daily basis of your just hummings and goings in communication. God, help me understand the impact of salvation in this relationship. Let salvation flow through me in this interchange. Let my thoughts be captive to the fact that I have been saved and made whole in Jesus. Set me free enough that I can show love in this situation. God, how do I deal with this? What is this? Talk to the God who brought you salvation because he didn't just bring you into proximity. He brought you into his home and he's encouraging you to live there. Live in the house of God. Let's pray. Father, I pray that as we do examine our souls, it's a healthy thing to do. It's a good thing. It's an opportunity to see what we've been doing with what we've been given. I know for a fact that you desire for your, your children to seek you and to know you. Because then we find you. So Lord, may we examine our souls with integrity, not with guilt, but with integrity. Not feeling, oh, I didn't do enough, so I can't do anything now. Let that go and come before the God of salvation and pour ourselves before you and say, God, this year, 2021, in the midst of all the turmoil, all the garbage, all the junk that's going on, I will pray because I dwell in the house of God. And then salvation can reign in my life. And then life from God will be seen in me. And then I will experience what it is that no circumstance can bind me anymore because I am free in Christ. May our homes be the house of God. May they be filled with prayer. May this church be a church that seeks to pray first because you reside with us. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. See, Christ is my reward. Christ is my
always by my side. My strength is in your name. Opportunity in a new year is to, wisdom asks of us to examine our souls. And so, as I said, I want to read you just again that definition of uh, Cheshvan Ha Nefesh. Examine your soul and assess your behavior toward God and others, and then set out to repair any broken relationships before the new year begins. I didn't say, well, we're already a week and some odd into the new year. No, your new year with God, it isn't determined by a date or a number on a page. It's, it's simply to do with the days ahead, I will live them with God. Let me examine my soul and the things that affect my soul to see whether or not I am living each day that may come with an intent of knowing my God. Start with your relationship with God. I guarantee you, you start with God and you start to seek Him that your life becomes where He dwells with you. It's a house of prayer and our gathering is a house of prayer. And us as believers, when we are together, that prayer is what uh, shapes, defines, and everything else about us, it will affect every relationship that you have. Absolutely every relationship. It will change how you approach things. But if you think that, uh, that being a follower of Jesus and the salvation you have received in Him is somehow for your personal gain, you walk out of the house and you set up your own tent. I'm encouraging you, inviting you back to the house of God. And it is defined by and known by and experienced through prayer. If prayer is a struggle for you, call me. I want to help develop a passion in you to pray. But most of us know how to pray. It's just a matter of take the obligation away and let's make it a conversation with God. My prayer for us, West Valley 2021, is that we will become the house of God. I think we know what that means. 
we will become the house of God. So here's what I'm gonna encourage you to do. Let's break it down into practical steps. One, I want you to start a conversation with God. That's what prayer is, a conversation with God about what's keeping you from praying your salvation. Ask him to show you. What is it that you're afraid uh, you won't gain if you become dependent on God? Remember Jesus said there's two houses. There's those for personal gain and those who are dependent. It didn't take a lot of time to develop that. But that's the truth that he's pointing out when Jesus has gone in the temple and said, my house will be house of prayer. Why and what keeps you from depending on God? Make your conversation with God. Start talking to him and then start talking to him. What does my salvation literally mean in my relationship with you in my relationship with others? Make it your conversation because when you find you're having a hard time uh, communicating your salvation in your relationships, you're already talking to the God who gave it to you. He will change what needs to be changed. And then I want to encourage you, simple way, I want our Tuesday night prayer time to be packed. It's online, the link's available to you. If we, I, I would love it if we had to start breaking into two, three, four groups to be able to get a chance for all of us to pray together. It's not, you're not forced to pray, it's nothing. Throw out all your preconceived ideas. This is where we come in and to the house of God and we're sitting in his living room talking to him in the community of believers. It's time for us to pray in the house of God. And I can't say it strong enough, no guilt. I'm not trying to say you've been bad or I've been bad. It's a matter of this is what Jesus gave us. He gave us access to the living, holy God who thousands of years ago said, my house will be a house of prayer and I'm inviting you in. That salvation arrived in Jesus. We celebrated it at Christmas. We celebrated it at Easter with his resurrection. And in that resurrection, we were given the keys to the house of God. And the rooms were made and God has invited you in. And he says, when you live here, you'll find that you pray. You talk to me. Let's make our church, our lives, the house of God. I love you. Love you so much. Thanks for being here this morning if you're here in the building. And, and thanks for watching online. May God bless you. May you make this next few weeks a chance where you examine your soul. Cheshpan Hanefish. That you are doing the examination that is necessary to build your life in, in the house of God. Have a great week.